Hello, welcome everyone to the last video of the Kotlin Flows playlist. And in this video, we will see shared flow and channel, compare them and see in which case we should use which. So this is where I stopped in the previous video, which was about state flow. And uh, in the previous video, I said that state flow is for holding states for uh, configuration changes so that we keep them and we, we don't lose them during configuration changes. Now we will see shared flow and channel. And uh, they actually serve the same purpose, which is sending a one-time event now in a normal flow which is uh, what i showed you in i guess in the second video of this playlist where i created a flow that actually sends multiple events or can emit uh, multiple emissions uh, over time and a uh, state actually does not emit but instead we store our states our screen states on it so that we don't lose them in our configuration change but shared flow actually is not for storing states but instead for Again, I'm meeting, but a one-time event. So we can do one emission and the same with channel. And we actually use them uh, more often to show toast, uh, snack bars, uh, earlier dialogues, and so on, or, or navigation. So for example, if our view model tries logging in, and once the authentication succeeded, then we send an emission with this shared flow to our screen that telling it, we, you now you can navigate to the other activity or to the other screen. So let's actually see that and it's emit values using shared flow and channel. So it's just create the init block here to emit those because, and the only one thing I might not have mentioned before is that uh, shared flow is a hot flow. Meanwhile, the other flows that I showed you in the, uh, which are the normal flows are called cold flows. And a cold flow actually, as we saw, needed a collector to start emitting. So we need to collect it to actually start emitting. Uh, in shared flow it doesn't need a collector it will emit at any time for example here in the init block here if i'm emitting and there was no collector then shared flow will still be emitting and those emissions uh, will be lost and now channel actually is not a hot flow instead it is a uh, normal flow or a code flow if there is no collector then there won't be any emissions or it the channel won't send because normally it, it actually sends so it won't send any events until there is a collector so we'll see that right now now to do that we first need a life cycle scope here or actually a view model scope this is a view model dot launch and since actually these interact with the ui we actually normally want to use a dispatcher dot main dot immediate uh, but actually for view model and life cycle scope that this is the default one so if you are actually in a different scope let's say IO or something you want to actually change that to the main dispatcher the immediate main dispatcher because this will interact with uh, with our UI where our UI actually is in the main thread so let's actually emit a value using shared for just showing a toast a toast normally so let's say here shared flow dot emit and let's actually say here boolean because we want to show a toast and the same for the channel here so let's say true and let's just do this after two seconds. And now let's go to, I actually created another activity and we will see why we need that uh, second activity in a second. I'm going to delete this. And here is what I created in the previous video. Now I'm just going to show a channel, I mean a toast. And actually a toast needs context. So I'm going to create context. That is local context.current. And I will use a launched handler. I mean, a launched effect. Sorry, a launched effect is just uh, as I explained it in the coroutines video. It's just a safe place to collect our uh, flows here to uh, make sure that it only fires once. So it's say true, and uh, true can never be false. So this will only fire once, and uh, in each recomposition we might refire this, and then uh, we don't want that. So using a launched effect and true, we will avoid that. So let's actually collect it using simple view model. Uh, one i guess that's named dot so let's start with the shared flow dot collect because of course we don't want to drop events in case we have toast and then we have a snack bar or uh, navigation we are, we need all those events and now let's just uh, say first if because we get here the value if show we create a toast here host it make text context let's say toast Uh, dot show now let's run the app and see if we can see our toast after two seconds because i put a delay of two seconds after two seconds here is my toast using the shared flow so this is why we actually would need this so let's say this is 
these two seconds was actually trying to connect to a backend or trying to authenticate it. And once we successfully authenticated or uh, we didn't, so we want to send now an emission to tell our UI to do something, to show a toast or a snack bar, as I said, or anything. Now let's use actually the channel. And with the channel, we actually send events. We don't emit them. Uh, the same here. We use the channel flow. And we run the app again. After two seconds, here is my toast. And uh, everything is fine. Now you might see they are the same thing, they serve the same purpose, but what is the difference here? And as I mentioned, the shared flow is a hot flow and the channel flow is not a hot flow, instead it is a cold flow. So we'll see why actually that matters and how does that make a difference. And the example I'm going to create is very simple. So instead of just emitting booleans in here, instead I'm going to be emitting integers and the channel as well. And right here, I'm first going actually to create a variable. So var, I'm just going to say num is initially a zero. And then I will send the number like this. And that will happen every, let's say, 500 milliseconds. And then I will increase my number by one. Actually, and then I want to have a while. So I keep doing this. So let's say while number is smaller than a thousand, for example, or a hundred, whatever like this. Now uh, I will keep doing this. I will keep sending this number a thousand times. Each time there is a 500 milliseconds delay. And now I actually don't need this toast anymore. I'll come here to just, because now I just want to log what I'm getting. So say simple view model dot now. Let's go for the channel flow and it gives me a number. And I'm going to log that out. So log dot D using the tag and let's say channel flow number and actually I'm going to do the same for the shared flow so shared flow shared flow number let's first see how our channel flow works but actually before trying to see it it's actually now use that second activity that I created to demonstrate something to you so we'll just create a simple button here button and inside that button I'm just going to have a text that says start and in the on click I'm going to create an intent import that and this main activity second activity or main main activity sec2 that's what it's called dot also start it start activity it now in the uh, button click, I will start the other activity. So let's just see what's going on with the channel in our log cat. And we'll see actually the difference. So let's check our log cat. Now we are uh, sending events. And then when I click on the button, I stop at 16 because now there is no collector. My activity is in the background. When I go back, I resume collecting normally. And then when I stop my app, it stops. And as you can see, there are all the numbers, all the events, no one is lost. And that's not the case for my shared flow. As I said, shared flow is a hot flow and it will keep emitting even if there is no collector. So let's actually see that. Right like this. Now, actually one thing I would use collect here, not collect latest because I, I want all the events in that case. As we saw when I explained collect latest, if there is no time to process the current event and there is a new event, then we will ignore the previous one. Actually, I would use collect here, not collect latest. But first, I think I'm not emitting anything uh, with the shared flow right here. So let's say emit. And let's say I have a delay here of three seconds before I start collecting. So let's, but actually, as we see, my shared flow will start emitting immediately. So at the initial of my view model, meanwhile, my uh, activity or my collector will start collecting after three seconds. So there is no collector for the first three seconds, but the shared flow is actually emitting with no collectors. As you can see now, the app is launching. So as we saw here, we have lost all the first emissions from one to five are lost because there was no collector to collect them because that is a hot flow. It emits values 
without having a collector. So for the first three seconds, we didn't have a collector. In those three seconds, we did make, let's say, five emissions and they are all lost now. And let's say those emissions are important. So if that emission is a snack bar, we want to show the snack bar to the user, but now it's lost because there was no collector. Now, if we try this with the channel, so let's just go back here. And then we put this delay uh, right here before collecting my channels event and I run the app. So there won't be any collector for the channel for the first three seconds. But I start at zero, not at six, because the channel won't be emitting values or sending values or events until there is a collector. So we should really be careful here. If we want to show things to the, to the user, like toast, uh, snack bars, which are very important for the user to see if there's any problem or something in the app, then we would need to use a channel because channel does not drop events because a channel does not uh, send events until there is a collector. And let's say now I'm not going to actually send anything with the channel, but in the just in the uh, shared flow, and I just go back like this to be emitting values with the shared flow. Now we'll see what happens if we start the new activity and uh, starting the new activity will be just like a configuration change. So I launch my app. Now I start at zero because I didn't put the delay. So there was a collector from the very first time. I'm now collecting. I start my new activity. I stopped at seven because now is in the collector, the activity is in the background. Now we'll see what's going on when I go back. As you can see, there is a big problem here. So I, I actually started my activity and there was 70. And when I came back, it's 34. There is a huge number of events that are lost. And these events may be important. And this could happen in a configuration change. If I just want to rotate my device, if there is an event that came exactly at the moment where I rotated my device, that event will be lost. I know that would really happen, but actually we should really be careful with this. We need to use a channel if we want to show things to the user. And you might say, why then do we have a shared flow if it's if there's a channel to serve this purpose? A shared flow can have multiple collectors. Unlike channel, channel can only have one collector, so there won't, there won't be multiple collectors for the channel. But with a shared flow, we can have more than just one collector. And that could be really good if, let's say, different parts of our app need to be notified when the user is no longer authenticated. So if there's any problem with the authentication, if the uh, authentication token or something has expired, then all the different parts of my app needs to be notified. And then what I can do is that in each part, I will have a collector for the shared flow. And then why that shared flow can have actually multiple collectors, they will all be notified that now there is no uh, authentication or the user is no longer authenticated because the flow notified them all, sent the, the event to all of them. Meanwhile, a channel can't do that. So this is why we would use a channel. I mean, why would use a shared flow over a channel? And if we would just want to show things to the user and we only have one collector, which is what we want normally or usually in our app to just show toast, snack bars, uh, dialogues and stuff like this or to navigate, then we would like to use a channel instead of a uh, shared flow. So now we understand the difference between a shared flow in the channel. And uh, yes, as I said, this is the last video in this uh, playlist. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you find it helpful. See you in another video and bye.